Hi, I'm Alicia and welcome to my channel Paper Craft Secrets. Today I'm making a set of six bulk cards. That is a kit available for sale over on my website at www.papercraftsecrets.com.au. These cards are created using Min Tay's homemade collection. It is a beautiful shabby chic collection that I absolutely love. Three of the cards are best wishes cards and three of the cards are thank you cards and you will also create a set of six gift boxes to give your cards in. Let's get started and I'll show you exactly how to create these cards. First of all you'll need these two pages here. This is the homemade collection and it's the number six paper. It's got the frames and the fussy cutting images. So you need to trim down all of these images. You've got a little cute little teapot and flowers and embroidery rings. Um, we've got some little suitcases with some roses, clocks and tags, embroidery ring, something like a kitchen bench a wreath on the front door, a tea pool, a watering can with flowers, some really really pretty designs and on the reverse we've got our little frames. So you need to cut out all of those frames and you know it's nice to do our fussy cutting in a relaxing environment so you might want to do it in front of the TV or you know when you're doing something else relaxing so that you can just enjoy the process of fussy cutting it's it is quite relaxing um, and fun to do when you're not in a rush so you can see how I have gone ahead and I have trimmed down all of these little uh, frames and so I would like you to as as one of the first things that you do when you receive your kit is just to spend some time trimming down all of your frames so that you will have 12 frames all together and they're all slightly different And once you have trimmed down all of your 12 frames, then it is time to take your other number six paper and fussy cut out all of these little images. Now I'll show you exactly what I cut out so you can have a close look at it and you're not guessing. So here we've got the watering can with the roses. So that came off that page there. We've got the little kitchen bench with the watering can, which was that page, that photo or picture. Oh no, actually it wasn't, it was this one. This picture down here. The tag with the watering can. Is it a watering can or is it a teapot? I, I'm not really sure. There's the embroidery hoop, that one there, so I cut around that. There's the little kitchen bench or Maybe that's a mud room. This is the wreath that's hanging down off the door. So I cut that out. This is the suitcase and the roses. So you can see how I've cut the small picture out of the background. So when you're cutting, that's basically what we're doing is just cutting the picture from the background. That's the kitchen bench. There's the tag and the clock, a, a rose or a floral cluster, and another embroidery hoop. So they are the 12 fussy cut images that you need to cut out as one of your first little jobs when you get your kit, but again, take your time, enjoy the process. relax and enjoy. So that's the first fussy cutting task for the kit from the two number six papers. 
and then you'll end up with your two little piles one of frames and one of fussy cut images that we will use in the creation of our cards. So let's move on now to our next step. In your kit, you will receive six folded note cards that we will use for the base of our cards. There's also six envelopes that will be included in the kit, but we're actually not going to use them. You can use them for other cards if you like. Um, we're actually going to make our own and um, bo gift boxes and those cards and note cards are Kayser Craft note cards. So we're going to start with our number five paper, which is roses on one side and the white doors on the back. And we're going to cut our paper for our cards. Now the measurement that we're going to cut is five and seven eighths and that's inches. Now if you're if you're a centimetre person you could use 15 centimetres. I personally prefer inches so I'm I, I work in inches with my crafting I don't know why I just do. If you prefer centimetres you can feel free to change you know to centimetres if that suits you better but I'm going to go off the inches which is five and seven eighths. Our next cut will be four inches, which is kind of close to 10 centimeters. So that will leave a nice white border around the edge of our card. So we're gonna cut it four, four inches and then that will be four inches again. Cutting it four inches and four inches and that will give us six pieces of cardstock measuring five and seven eighths by four inches. Beautiful. All right, moving on to our next step now. We're going to choose a new piece of paper, which is this gorgeous pink and white polka dot paper. I absolutely love this paper. It's so soft. It's the number two page in the collection. It's very, very pretty. We're going to make our first cut at five and five eighths, which is close to 14 centimeters. So here we go, five and five eighths, and that will fit nicely in that square. So let's make another cut at five and five eighths. And then our next cut will be three and three quarters, which is kind of close to nine and a half centimeters three and three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to chop mine down at three and three quarters of an inch. Three and three quarters. And again, I will get six of these rectangles from my pink polka dot paper. And I'll have a little scrap that I can throw in the bin. Or you can keep it and reuse it in another way. So there we have our two different sized rectangles and that's for our front cover. We're actually going to make another rectangle and this will be for the inside of our card. Now I'm just going to do a one, one in centimeters just so you can see what that looks like. So there's your 15 centimeter by 10 centimeter piece and then if you were going to follow the rough sort of centimeter guidelines that I gave before that would be your 14 centimeters by your 9.5 centimeters and so you'll see it's you know it's quite close to um, the inches you can make it work you can position that pink cardstock in the middle so that you can get it to work quite nicely. I just do prefer using inches myself. You can see the inches one is just, I just find it easier with the Kayser Craft note cards 
it just works just that little bit easier to get the correct measurements but either one would be fine and you can adjust those measurements to you know whatever card stock you're working with if you make up your own card bases then you can change these measurements to suit the card that you're working with at the time let's move on now to our next step which is taking this lovely page here it's got some flowers it's got some old-fashioned sort of writing paper on it it's a bit of a collage of all sorts of different things this is going to go on the inside of our cards where we write our message. So we're going to cut it at five and seven eighths. And again at five and seven eighths. And then we will cut it four inches. all of those pieces and again four inches for all of these pieces and that'll give us the insides of our cards excellent work so we have all of the cutting completed now we've got our insides cut we've got our front covers cut we've done all of the fussy cutting needed for our cards so now we're ready to move on to our next step. So for our next step, we're going to add some glue to the back of our floral page. I like to use Couture Creations glue for my cards. We're going to position that in the middle of the card so that we have a white border all the way around the edge of the patterned paper. And now we repeat that for each of the six cards. Excellent. So they're looking really nice so far. It's a beautiful piece of paper, that one, with the roses and the leaves and the lovely vintage colours. So now we're going to move on to our pink polka dot paper and we're going to layer that on top. I'm using some recycled cardboard to mount my pink polka dot paper on top of the base of my card to add some height, some dimension and some interest. If you prefer to keep your cards flat for postage, you can skip this step of adding recycled cardboard and you can just use glue. Alternatively, you can use double-sided mounting tape. And I'm just going to repeat that process for each one of my cards. So that I've got some recycled cardboard on there and then I'm just gluing the pink polka dot paper down onto the front of each card and making sure that it's really nice and straight. And that's them all done. Our last step is to glue this paper down onto the inside of our card, which is where we're going to write our message for our card. So here I'm following the same procedure of just gluing that on and positioning that into the middle of each of the six cards. And that finishes that step. Our cards now have all of their layers, base layers glued on. And we're now going to start building the feature layers of the card. So we need our little frames that we're going to use. We're going to layer our frames. We're also going to use these beautiful Prima flowers that come in the kit. They're a beautiful flower and that matches perfectly in with the colors. And we're also using the beautiful Bloomer chipboard.
We've got three best wishes sentiments. And we have three thank you sentiments. We're actually going to have two frames on each of the cards and two images on each of the cards. We are going to use some cheesecloth. You've got cheesecloth in your kit. You need to cut six pieces of cheesecloth to begin with. What we will do to begin with is we're going to take one of our frames and we're going to use some mounting tape or some recycled cardboard and pop that frame directly in the middle of our card. Now there's a couple of frames that look better vertically than horizontally so I'm going to pop those ones vertically in the middle here. So you can see how I've positioned that frame right in the middle of the card. Let's pop that one in there, and that one in there, and then our last one in there. And we're just straightening all of those up, making sure they're nice and straight and ready to go. Our next step is to take our cheesecloth and just add a dab of glue into the middle of each of those frames and just spread some cheesecloth over that glue and the little dab in the center just holds it in place until we're ready to layer over the top. The next thing is to take the other six frames and these frames are going to be positioned horizontally and they're going to be on the left hand side of the card. So again some more recycled cardboard or some mounting tape onto these frames to give them the elevation and the dimension. Now because we've already put some cardboard under the first frame. We actually need two pieces of cardboard on the base of the card to allow that frame to be in a secure position and not sort of bending down on one side. We want it to be nice and even and flat. So two pieces of cardboard on the card base and one piece of cardboard on the frame will create a nice flat surface for our frame. So two pieces of cardboard on the side there and one in the middle and then the frame just making sure that everything is looking straight, perpendicular, pull the cheesecloth out as much as you can so that you're not just covering it up with the frame. There we go. And then our very last card now, two pieces of cardboard on the base and one in the middle. Just change that around. I like to put the colour down so if you look underneath all you see is the craft colour of the card cardboard. There we go. You're doing really well. This is looking really good. Choose your image that you want to go on your card and choose a flower for each. The next step is to take your chipboard sentiments and to position them on the card that you would like them to go on. You can ink your chipboard sentiments if you would like to using some of the ink that you have at home. 
Next, take your second picture that you fussy cut and we're going to slide that in underneath our base frame. Sliding that in and in under there. Looking good. Our next step is to add some ribbon bows. So in your kit you have ribbon provided. So you're going to create a bow with your ribbon to go underneath your flower. Now we're going to start to glue everything down, all of our um, elements down onto the card. So I'm starting with that little picture underneath. It's going to glue that down to the base of the card. And then I'm going to glue my top picture down onto the front of the card. I'm not adding more mounting tape or double sided tape or recycled cardboard. I'm happy with the height of my card. You can add more if you would like to. Now we're going to add a little bit more cheesecloth underneath our flower and our ribbon. So you need to cut another six smaller pieces of cheesecloth for your cards. We're also going to add a lace bow to add to our vintage feel to these shabby chic cards. It's always nice to add some lace. So Make a bow with the lace that you have in your kit and we'll add those underneath our flowers. So now we are starting to glue everything down. We're going to glue our cheesecloth, then our pink ribbon, then our lace ribbon and then our flower on top. We're making a little floral cluster. Cheesecloth, pink ribbon, lace, flower. And just repeat that same process in the bottom left hand corner of the card on each one of your six cards. And then the last card. Beautiful, the flowers are just gorgeous. Now for the sentiment, I like to use some glue on a paintbrush for the sentiment. So I just get a little bit of glue out and then I just paint the back of my sentiment with the glue. I find this is a little bit easier than using the liquid glue. You've got a little bit more control out over it and you don't get so many stringy bits. And then just position that on your card where you'd like it to go. And then one by one, just adding some glue to the back of each of your sentiments and then positioning those onto the front of your card. Some of the sentiments are separate words. So you have a little bit more control over where you wish to position those words. There we go, that's looking beautiful. Then just take your scissors and trim off any excess ribbon and lace that you don't need on your cards. If it's just a little bit too long in places, you can just trim those edges back a little bit. Cards are looking gorgeous. Colours are beautiful. I absolutely love this collection of papers that matches so well with these beautiful flowers and these gorgeous wooden sentiments. Beautiful handmade cards.
We're going to move on now and create our small gift box. This is a free printable download on my website at www.papercraftsecrets.com.au. You can print this off for yourself and create a gift box. I, I will print this out for the, for the people who might purchase the kits. So you'll have a copy of this in your kit. This is the measurements to show you how to create the gift box. The first thing you do is take off the bar strip, barcode strip and then you cut your paper at 9 inches. So you'll have a 3 inch strip and you'll have a 9 inch rectangle. So do that to all 6 of your pages. Cut off your strip and then cut at 9 inches. I like to make these envelopes in bulk because it's a lot faster to do them in bulk than to do them one at a time. Okay, that's the first bit done. You need a scoring board. The first thing we're going to score on, we're going to put it on the 9 inch side, I'm going to score it at 1 inch and 8 inches, 1 inch, 8 inches, 1 inch, 8 inches, 1 inch, 8 inches, 1 inch, 8 inches. Then we're going to turn it to the 12 inch side and we score it 4 and a half, 5 and a half, 10 and 11. Four and a half, five and a half, ten and eleven, as per the instructions on the sheet. Now we take the belly band, we score it one and three quarters, two and three quarters, seven and a quarter, eight and a quarter. You can see that written down the bottom of the chart there. It tells you exactly where you need to score. We do that for all six of the belly bands. Your next step is to take a pair of scissors. We're going to do a little bit of cutting on all of these pages. So you'll see here you're going to cut away those two little squares at the top section. It's a little bit hard to see in the video but you follow the folding lines and you cut there and you cut down here. and that little rectangle comes away and you do that on the other side as well cutting to there and then cutting that section away and then you make two slits on the fold lines here and here And then you do exactly the same on the other side. And that's all you need to do for your cutting. So then you need to go through all of your other boxes, all six of them, and do that cutting as well. Once you've done all your cutting, then it's time to do your score lines. You can use your boning folder to help you with your score lines. Now you can make a decision about which way you want your papers to go. What, what design do you want on the front of your box? So currently how I'm folding mine, that would have made the gingham on the, in, on the outside and the pretty picture on the inside. I'm going to change it so that I've got the pretty picture on the outside of my box and the gingham on the inside of the box. So you just need to go through and fold down on all of those um, score lines and then we will start to glue together. So 
put a little bit of glue on those tabs and bring those bring that box together and then a little bit of glue on these tabs here and fold that down and a little bit on this tab and fold that down it's a very simple box to make and then that little bit just tucks in like that beautiful I love making these boxes people are so impressed when they receive one of these boxes with a card inside so again we're just going to go through and do all of the folding for all of our boxes and then adding the glue to the tabs pulling the box together and creating the box this process is quite simple but quite repetitive so again you might like to listen to a podcast or watch some YouTube while you are creating your boxes I often listen to a podcast or watch a YouTube video when I'm crafting especially when I'm doing something repetitive and in bulk and that's all of our boxes all finished now they're looking very beautiful we're going to create the belly bands so to start with we need to fold and score on our folding lines So we're just pressing those down with on the fold and using our bone folder to create a nice crisp fold. And so a belly band goes around the box to just sort of hold it together. So you can choose which paper you would like to use depending on the paper that you've made the box out of whether you want to coordinate or contrast the paper colors and the designs i generally choose to contrast and then inside the kit there are some little um, sticky dots um, that you can use to attach the belly band so that the recipient of the card can easily do the belly band back up again after they've opened the card. So just pop one little dot on there and then the other little dot on and then it can be opened and closed easily. And this is just a lovely finishing touch to the box and it also um, you know adds to the wow factor of the card it's it's a very well presented card and people who I've given these cards to really are, are quite impressed with the box and the card inside so I think it's nice and I think it's a nice way to give a bulky card like a really heavily decorated card does not fit in an envelope so it's nice to have a little gift box for for a heavily decorated card it's the little blue gingham paper there it's really really sweet And then the very last box. And that's all of the boxes with their belly bands on now. The final thing that we can do with our gift boxes is we can add some embellishment to the belly band if 
desired. You do have this page here in your kit that we have not used and this is perfect for embellishing our box. So if you would like you can choose six images or more depending on how much embellishment you would like to add to each of your boxes and there's also some beautiful blue butterflies on this page that you can either add to your cards or you could add to the the gift boxes up to you i'm just going to go through and cut out all of my images And then once they are all fussy cut down, you can just add those straight on to the belly band of your gift box for extra decoration. You can choose which way you want to pop, put them, whether you want them up and down or horizontal. Completely up to you. Just add maybe this floral cluster here on this one that looks really pretty. This one I'm going to layer the tag and then the flower. And this one's just got a clock inside a little glass case. And then you can add on your butterflies as you wish. They really are the most beautiful butterflies. So pretty. And that brings us to the conclusion of our class. I hope that you enjoyed creating along with me to create these cards. Remember to purchase your kit, please head on over to my blog at www.papercraftsecrets.com.au and secure your kit and then we can really create together. I hope that you enjoyed the class. Please let me know if you have any suggestions for future videos or for future kits. Make sure that you have subscribed to my YouTube channel so that you are up to date on the latest classes. And I hope that you have a lovely crafty day.